and welcome to the 12th service of the Kirk in Quarantine for Balfron Church. It's been 12 long weeks that we haven't been able to be together in the church and finally this morning the church is open for individual prayer until 12 o'clock. All the information is on the website if you need to find out more. But because of the restrictions in place we're still going to meet online for our services every Sunday. And as I said there's been 12 and over the last 12 weeks 30 of our congregation have taken part children and adults with hymns and prayers and messages and reflections. It's been a truly blessed time despite the terrible restrictions on us and the fact we've been stuck in our homes. And often during that time when we were stuck in our home, I, like many others, have taken my daily exercise down at the river. The river here, the River Endrick, has been such a source of comfort and joy for me. And I was reminded of that lovely hymn we sung the other day to the river. And one of the last verses, I think, says, um, Come and join us in the river. Come find life beyond compare. He is calling. He is waiting. Jesus longs to meet you there. He's longing to meet with us this morning, online again, but together praising his name and having his unending blessings pour upon us. Enjoy this service and uh, we'll see you again next week. Psalms 103, The Love of God Praise the Lord my soul, all my being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord my soul and do not forget how kind he is. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He keeps me from the grave and blesses me with love and mercy. He fills my life with good things so that I stay young and strong like an eagle. The Lord judges in favour of the oppressed and gives them their rights. He revealed his plans to Moses and let the people of Israel see his mighty deeds. The Lord is merciful and loving, slow to become angry and full of constant love. He does not keep on rebuking. He is not angry forever. He does not punish us as we deserve or repay us according to our sins and wrongs. As high as the sky above the earth, so great is his love for those who honour him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our sins from us. As a father is kind to his children, so the Lord is kind to those who honour him. He knows what we are made of. He remembers that we are dust. As for us, our life is like grass. We grow and flourish like a wild flower. Then the wind blows on it and it is gone. No one sees it again. But for those who honour the Lord, his love lasts forever and his goodness endures for all generations of those who are true to his covenant and who faithfully obey his commands. The Lord placed his throne in heaven. He is king over all. Praise the Lord, you strong and mighty angels who obey his commands, who listen to what he says. Praise the Lord, all you heavenly powers, you servants of his who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his creatures in all the places he rules. Praise the Lord, my soul. Three. <laughs> Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, righteous of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior. Of mercy, whispers of love. 
stayed in my prayers ever since. Praise is sometimes an act of defiance. There are times where we must praise despite our situation. It's easy to praise God when times are good. When everything seems to be going well and all is as it should be, we are quick to praise God when times are good. But are we so quick to praise Him when it goes wrong? In the last four months, I have felt like so many others, helpless, out of control, scared, nervous, worried. I don't need to labour the point because we've all been living through the same drama, watching unfold, powerless to stop what has been happening around us. But as Christians, we're told to praise God in the bad times as well as the good. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18 says, Rejoice always. Pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So giving thanks in all circumstances is not an easy or a natural thing to do, but it's a transforming thing to do. What I've been learning through this lockdown and other experiences in my life so far is that being able to praise in all circumstances are about the centre of my focus. When I'm focused on God, any and all things can happen around me. And I will not be shaken, but when I'm focused on myself, I can start to lose my footing. You see, we worship because of who God is, not because of what we feel like. Our feelings can change. My feelings change with the wind. But God remains on his throne no matter what. And I choose to worship because God is always good. The Rend Collective worship band released an album at the start of this lockdown period that spoke of this very thing. It's called Choose to Worship and the lyrics to the title track have stayed in my head and have really spoken to me since. I choose to worship. I choose to bow down. Though there's pain in the offering, I lay it down. Here in the conflict when doubts surround, though my soul is unravelling, I choose you now. I will praise you through the fire, through the storm and through the flood. There is nothing that can ever steal my soul. In the valley you are worthy. You are good when life is not. You will always and forever be my soul. In the joy of the suffering I'll sing it loud. There's a defiance in these lyrics that I really connect with. Praise is sometimes an act of defiance. It takes an act of will, uh, a boldness. I'll be honest, I don't always feel it. But this is what God requires of us. Hebrew 12, 2 to 3. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not go weary and lose heart. Romans 8, 39, there's nothing in all creation that will ever be able to separate us from the love of God, which is ours through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Hebrews 13, 6, 
Let us be bold then and say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? See, the Bible is full of reasons for our praise to be never ending. God's word is always there to strengthen us and guide us. As our praise song in today's service said, there are 10,000 reasons for my heart to fight. Praising God in adversity will seem like madness to those that don't know him. We don't sing songs of joy and victory in the face of this darkness because we're living in denial, but because we choose to live in defiance. We praise him because he's worthy of it, not because we feel like it. It's an act of defiance and it's an act of obedience. We do it because it focuses us on Jesus. We do it because it gets us through the dark times. And we do it because it brings us together as brothers and sisters in Christ. Now you may have heard it said, until God opens the next door, praise him in the hallway. I say, when in doubt, praise him. When you feel lost and alone, praise him. When things don't go your way, praise him. When you don't feel like it, praise him. When the world says all is lost, praise him. And then when they tell you you can't win, you shout back, I already have, and lift your praise as an act of defiance. Amen. Living God, maker of all life, we bless you for this time of year when there is lushness and warmth and light, when the rain mostly falls vertically and waters our gardens and fields so that food can grow and flowers. We bless you for farm animals and wild ones. Their sight delights us and reminds us that we are all part of your wonderful creation. We bless you for holidays even if we might not be able to travel far this year. There is blessing in being able to change gear, in leaving work emails unopened and abandoning Zoom meetings, in finding a rhythm that lets us breathe more freely and lets our souls soar. Loving God, we pray for our children. They have had to adapt to a strange and restricted life. They have worked hard to do school from home. They have missed their friends. They have not been able to run around and go daft as much as would have been good for them. They have soaked up our fears and worries. Now that home does not need to be school for a while, we pray that they can relax and play and rest and dawdle and daydream, have pajama days, muddy days, loud days, quiet days, Ice cream days, days with friends, days with family. Strengthening God, we pray for the parents among us. They have been juggling work from home and acting as teachers, not to mention housework and trying to keep everyone fed. They have often had to do all this at the one kitchen table. They have entertained restless toddlers and supported frustrated, frustrated teenagers. There has been blessing in spending more time together, cooking together, laughing and crying together, but there have also been tensions and tantrums and not much opportunity to take some time out. For many, the last few months have felt relentless, impossible, exhausting. We pray that they too can take some time to rest and recover. We pray that they will have support beyond their annual leave, and we especially hold before you the ones who are wrestling with financial worries and job insecurity. Centering God, we pray for us all at this time when lockdown rules are slowly relaxed. There are so many mixed emotions woven into this new reality. We are impatient and want to get back to normal. We are afraid of the virus and frightened of infection. Through the weeks of isolation, we have become very sensitive and are nervous of other people and places. Suddenly, everything feels unsafe. We have worked so hard at being disciplined that sometimes we would love just to throw caution to the wind and go out and party. 
We pray for all whose health makes them vulnerable still. We pray for those whose treatment or surgery has been postponed. We pray for exhausted medical staff and key workers, all who have just kept going to keep us going. We pray that you continue to keep us steady so that we can move on slowly but surely and responsibly towards better times. Compassionate God, we pray for everyone for whom things are still tough. We remember those around us who have lost a loved one, those who struggle with not having been able to say goodbye properly. We pray for those who are recovering from the COVID virus and are in need of lots of support to regain their strength. We pray for all who feel a bit lost and unsettled after weeks of isolation. And we hold before you those who have found this situation truly depressing and who are not sure how to get out of the dark place. We pray for the many countries in this world where poverty and overcrowded housing make people even more vulnerable to the COVID virus. We remember places like Yemen and Syria, Gaza, Iran, India, Kenya, Malawi, Brazil. We pray for people in refugee camps all over the world who have nowhere to go that feels safe. We ask your blessing on the millions of people whose lives don't make headlines in our news just now because we're so concerned with our own affairs, but who live with violence and war, injustice and terror every day. Gracious God, we are all your children. Each and every one of us is precious in your eyes. Bless us, protect us, keep us safe and show us how we can live as children of the one God, how to be friends of Jesus Christ, who meets us in the stranger near and far. In his spirit of love and unity, we pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not in temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith, or greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy for you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Oh, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, Oh, oh, oh. 
enjoyed today's service and that wherever you are in the world you feel God's presence near to you in this coming week. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>